Hey travelers, my name is Emily. I don't know about you, but after traveling for months and months and months and then coming home, things feel kind of weird. Things that used to feel really familiar to me don't anymore. And things feel kind of out of place. Even my sofa that I used to find really comfortable just feels kind of foreign to me. My home just doesn't feel like my own anymore. Friends' lives have moved on without me and streets have new building developments on them and just readjusting to the customs of my home country throws me off. According to the University of Saskatchewan, reverse culture shock, or re-entry shock as it's sometimes called, refers to the difficulty sometimes experienced when returning to your home country and culture after you've experienced it in another country. In fact, so many people experience it that the US State Department has an entire section of their website devoted to what it is, what the symptoms are, and what you can do to help yourself get through it. Coming back home isn't easy, especially if you've been away for a long time. I'm going to start by talking about some of the easier and funnier sides of reverse culture shock, and then get into some of the more serious things. One of the things I have trouble getting used to is having potable water straight from the tap again. In a lot of the places we travel, not only should we not drink the water from the tap, but we also shouldn't even brush our teeth with the water. So coming back to a place where we can brush our teeth with the tap water again really throws me off. I keep telling myself it's okay to put my toothbrush under the tap, but it's, uh, it's pretty tough. I keep wanting to reach for that pitcher of water and just pour the pitcher of water over my toothbrush. Now, let's get into the weather back home. Earlier this year, we visited Iguazu Falls on the Argentinian and Brazil border, and it was absolutely beautiful. Then we went back to Toronto for a few weeks, and I thought we'd take a quick trip to Niagara Falls to see how the two compare. But we forgot to consider the weather in Canada in April, and it was cold. Kind of shocking, as we hadn't been in such cold weather in a while, and I had completely forgotten that I needed to plan for this kind of thing this far north. Language is another thing. Walking into a shop or restaurant and being able to converse in English without any issues is funny. On the one hand, being able to walk into a shop and ask for what I want in English feels so nice. I'm able to clearly articulate what I want and get what I'm looking for. But on the other hand, sometimes I kind of miss that language barrier. Walking into a shop that speaks English, it's almost too easy. But then there are the costs. Usually we travel to places where we can afford to eat out regularly, but when we come back home, we have huge sticker shock. We look at the prices on the menu and we don't even want to eat there. Honestly, it's just too much money. And even if we do eat out, I usually just end up feeling bad about the money we spent afterwards. Service levels at restaurants are also different. When we're traveling in touristy areas, I'm used to people who are working at the restaurants to stand outside and show us their menus and try and entice us to come in. Here, when I walk down the street, I just walk right past the restaurant. If I want to find out what's on the menu, I have to go inside and try and get the attention of the hostess. I was once so much more comfortable with this approach. I really didn't want to be bothered as I walked down the street trying to find a place to eat. But now I feel more comfortable when I'm greeted at the front door and then asked to come inside. There are also so many rules here. Rules about how you can put up signage, where you can park, and how you can live. I know these rules are often developed with safety in mind, but when you come back here after living without them for so long, it can feel like a lot. When we travel, I love checking out all the vendors and markets that set up on the streets. But for some reason, they're not allowed to do that here. Everything has to be permitted, and that permitting process takes a really long time, and sometimes it's denied. I used to think that was really normal, but now that I've traveled a lot, it kind of bugs me a bit. I'm not saying that rules and permits are a bad thing. I know that they're often put into place to help keep us safe. It's just a bit of a reverse culture shock when you've been away from it for so long and then to come back to it. Kind of along similar lines is medication. When I'm traveling and I need a prescription like an antibiotic, I can simply walk into the pharmacy and ask for what I need and they give it to me. Here, if I need that same medication, I need to go through the process of going to see a doctor, getting a prescription, then going to the pharmacy and getting what I need. It's a few more steps and I find it just a little bit of a pain. Again, I do understand why we need those processes here and why they're important, but sometimes it is so much easier to get my medication without them. Socially, reverse culture is hard too. 
It's hard to get used to the wealth in a country like Canada after living in places where people have so little. I'm not saying that people aren't struggling at home because they are, but it seems so much different in other parts of the world that we travel. Entire homes with no running water and minimal electricity. When we come back home, it just feels like we have too much. And it's really hard for me to wrap my head around the differences of what we have. A couple of years ago, we spent some time in Peru. Our last few weeks there were in tiny towns in the Amazon jungle with only basic amenities. It was so hard to leave. I cried on the bus ride to the airport. And on the plane, I started shaking with anxiety at the idea of returning to Canada. I can't explain why I had these feelings and these emotions, but it was so hard for me to leave that part of the world. One big thing that I wasn't expecting is that home doesn't stay static. When I'm traveling, my home city is still evolving. Buildings are getting built, new shops are opening. Friends find new friends and they develop new interests all while you're away. When you come home, you're not coming back to the same place you've left. It's moved on without you. And this is really hard to get used to. I need to be able to adjust to the changes and not the expectations I had in my head when I left. Reverse culture shock can make me feel uncomfortable in my own home, but it's not all negative. Traveling has opened my eyes and made me a more empathetic person. But I think it's really important to understand that reverse culture shock exists so that we can identify it and then deal with it. And that's our video for today. We'll see you in the next one.